Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Scott Luton, Greg White with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's live stream. Greg, how you doing? Doing quite well. I think just like the rest of the world, we're just waiting to see where Aaron Rodgers winds up. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, he's got a wish list, I see. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if he gets all, everything he's wishing and hoping for, maybe. Yeah. Um, speaking of sports, Greg, perfect segue. It's, it's, like, it's like we coordinated this. Uh, so do you remember that scene, it's one of my favorites, from Rocky Three, where Clubber Lang, right, played by Mr. T, is asked for a prediction when it came to his fight with Rocky Balboa. Pain. He says, yes, you took it from me. He says, prediction, pain, just like that. Well, I bet global supply chain leaders feel that scene in their bones here in recent years, right? Lots of pain. So great show teed up today as we're talking three supply chain pains you can mm -hmm. solve with ERP and TMS working effectively together. Greg, it took me a little while, but there's a setup. So it should be a great show, huh? Sure. <laughs> that's right. Got it. That's right. <laughs> you got there. No, that's good. I think that's good. I'm glad I could participate in that in any way. So, well, I figured out it was a bridge too far to ask you to go with a Mohawk to play Cl Clubber Lang. I figured out it was a bridge too far. Um, I need a haircut anyway, but uh, I pity the fool. <laughs> all right so folks now that we've shared some uh some rocky trivia check out rocky three it's an oldie but a goodie uh greg we've got uh one of our favorites back with us here today we're looking forward to bringing our guests here in yeah. just a second but three supply chain pains right there's no shortage of pains but we've got a great show teed up here today with shannon and paul right yeah the real truth from a real pro who's been doing it a real while Mm. So, yeah, no Johnny come lately is here today, right? We've got some trained professionals, not what do we call them, Scott? Supply chain enthusiasts, right? They're real trained, real pros. That's yeah. right, real pros. Well, hey, let's say hello to a few folks really quick. Uh, Michelle up in New Hampshire, snowy New Hampshire. We got a weather report from Paul earlier. 13. We got one of her neighbors here today, as a matter of fact. Man, so Michelle, great to see you. John Patterson in warmer. Not warm, but warmer, Marietta, Georgia. John, great to see you. Josh Goody uh, says, may the caffeine hit your bloodstream before the banks report their losses. Ouch. Ouch, We're Josh. We're another one, aren't we? Credit Suisse <laughs> is not looking good. Mm. Uh, Jonathan tuned in from Louisiana. Great to see you back with us, Jonathan. Jonathan. Uh, Rahul tuned in from India via LinkedIn. Great to see you here as well. And folks, we look forward to all of your perspective. Drop it in the chat as we work through a great conversation here today. Okay, Greg. That sounds like, that sounds like a song lyric, doesn't it? Drop it in the chat. Drop, <laughs> Drop it in the chat. we got a great show. And with that said, Greg, I want to welcome in officially Paul Tedford, CEO at Synergy, and Shannon Valancourt, president at RateLinks. Hey, hey, Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good morning. How are you? Great to see you. Shannon, how you doing? Doing good as always. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Greg, Shannon is back by popular demand, right? Mostly mine, but other popular people as well. <laughs> All yeah. right. That... <laughs> when you want to hear the truth, you want SV. That's right. That is right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we're going to have a, a great conversation here with Paul and Shannon. And by the way, welcome in Stuart and Gino and many others. I'm uh, looking forward to y'all's take throughout. Um, all right. So before we jump into the conversation today, I want to start have a little bit of fun. I don't know if y'all are Rocky enthusiasts. Maybe y'all remember that scene that we were talking about uh, on the front end from Rocky Three. But we're going to switch gears from sports and talk food. We talk a lot of food here at Supply Chain Now. So I got a little 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 nugget of tr food trivia oh, to share oh, with y'all. So, hey, on this date, on March 15th, back in 1980, Paul, Shannon, and Greg, Chicken McNuggets were introduced in Knoxville, Tennessee by McDonald's. They became so popular almost overnight that McDonald's quickly had to find new suppliers to meet the demand. Now, with that said, because that may not be one of your favorite meals, uh, Paul, I'm start with you. What is one of your favorite chicken dishes and where do you get it? Well, I do love the McDonald's sweet and sour dip, but my favorite is the Out of Bounds sandwich out of uh, an Intervale, New Hampshire. It's a uh, Tuckerman's uh, Tavern, and it's uh, got it's a BLT with basically panko crusted chicken and um, mozzarella and a nice non bun and some chili aioli. So it's a good sandwich. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. 
That is <laughs> death on a bun. That sounds delicious. <laughs> It does, it though, and and, and thank you for making us all. If Chicken Man, Man no is it for you, thank you, Paul. <laughs> making everybody's stomach growl. Okay, Shannon, that's gonna be tough to beat. But your favorite chicken dish and where you get it? Boy, I'm gonna. I don't know. I don't really. <laughs> this is the boring part of me. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I would say probably the best chicken dish is the one I make. Okay. At home. Uh, Grilled, uh, baked, fried. So what, what you do is you take the uh, the chicken breast with the rib on it. We put a like a hot honey, sweet barbecue on top of it, uh, and bake it for about a half an hour, and then make like a sweet potato hash with it. Okay, it's pretty good. So that's about as it's about as exotic as I get <laughs> okay. on, uh, on the food side, unfortunately. Well, thank you for sharing that side of you, Shannon, and that recipe for folks. Okay, Greg, Paul, and Shannon have made us hungry. Your thoughts? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a spin. My favorite chicken dish is chicken fried steak uh, in Shannon's home, well, now hometown, Phoenix, Arizona, at Mrs. White's Golden Rule Cafe. Don't even know if that still exists, but it was some of the best chicken fried steak or fried chicken that you could get. Me and Charles Barkley would show up there as soon as, coincidentally, we didn't like coordinate or anything, and it happened maybe twice. As soon as she started serving lunch, was which was at promptly 11.35. So, okay. Um, yeah, you had to get there early to get one. Outstanding. Well, I just Love couldn't it. wait any longer, and I worked right <laughs> up the street. So, yeah. Love it. All right. And, and folks, everybody's getting hungry. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan says chicken on a bun in Camden, Alabama. Okay. That sounds good. Anything Alabama. Uh, Alan says chicken curry. I'm with you, Alan. Uh, and good to see you, Michael and David from uh, all over the U.S. coast to coast. Okay. So folks, now that we are starving, starving, we got to switch gears. Uh, we've got a jam packed conversation to work through here today. And I want to start, you know, Shannon's been been with us on, on a variety of shows, and we're going to talk more about rate links in, in a minute. But, Paul, welcome uh, to your first show here at Supply Chain Now. If you would, just level set in a nutshell, what do, what do you and the Synergy team do, Paul? Yeah, thank you. So Synergy helps manufacturers and distributors reach their full potential, and we do that in a couple of ways. It's a, we provide a turnkey solution, which is helping our customers, our prospect, prospective customers, choose the right ERP for their unique business. Mm. Um, and then we have a team of about 100 plus consultants that help with best practices and process to meet their 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 goals, their business goals and requirements out of that ERP. Um, and then we've helped about 1,450 customers implement wow. uh, ERP. And uh, we have a very experienced team because of that, because they've, they've done it for well over 15 years. And then after they're implemented, we love helping with continuous improvement. So that's Ooh. that's what Synergy does. The aftercare, critical, yeah. Paul. I love that. All right, so Greg, uh, he, they're doing some critical work at Synergy, huh? Yeah, well, somebody's got to plug that stuff in, right? Because God <laughs> help us if you try to do it yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I think what's important, look, I think you know what we're here to talk about is how you tie TMS, what RateLinks does, and ERP together to create that su success. And I think what's important to understand is there are a lot of things where ERP is – um, not as deep as, for instance, a rate links or other solutions in other areas. So you connect those two things, use the valuable parts of your ERP to connect to the valuable operations and, and, and technology in your TMS or other solutions. And, and that way you keep everything in sync, which is kind of what Paul and his team are talking about doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Greg, well said. Uh, and Shannon, I know y'all value the, the partnership you've got with Synergy. Anything before we get into the issues of the day, any other comment on your end, Shannon, about the great work Paul and Synergy are up to? No, I mean, it, it's been great working with their team. They're definitely, you know, top-notch professionals, lots of experience. So it's been a lot of fun working with them and being able to really tightly integrate finally once and for all with an ERP to really maximize the value. And I think that's mm -hmm. been the most exciting part so far. Well said, because because it's all, you know, optimizing all the bells and whistles and the maximum value out of these ERP, that's that's where some of the magic is created. So, um, all right. So I guess shift gears here. We're going to touch more on that later. 
And man, the comments keep coming. Tracy's talking about chicken fried steak. We've got some lots of recipes over there. I'm going to have to keep my, my focus here. Uh, Paul, let's start with you. So there's no shortage. I think as we continue to level setting for our conversation here today, no shortage of challenges or pain, as we put it on the front end, right? Uh, via our friend, Clever Lang. What are you seeing as some of the biggest issues challenging global supply chain across the industry right now? Yeah, so overall, we're seeing some improvements, you know, mm -hmm. especially from the beginning of the pandemic or during the pandemic, right? Especially around freight costs and some specific um, industries where capacity is increasing. Um, some lead times have stabilized as well, but there are certain industries, especially electronic components, natural gas, black carbon, uh, some steel, and lead times are increasing. Actually, mm -hmm. I just read an article about Girl Scouts having a supply chain issue, right? Oh, so, you saw that too, yeah. What so, a tragedy that is. You can't <laughs> let that happen. That's, uh, that's been happening for a number of years. So, um, you know, if you were to donate your services anywhere, Paul, I would say that would be really, really highly valued by not just the Girl Scout, but all of us who love thin men. <laughs> well, well, Greg, let's keep it real, though. Uh, Paul, if y'all save anything, save the thin mints and you can let all the other you can let all the cookies go, but protect our thin mints, okay? Yeah. Uh, Paul, didn't mean to interrupt. Any other any other I know you're you're sharing a variety of, of challenges. Anything else around off your list? Yeah, so the three top challenges that we see are labor shortages and, and wage increases that we've been talking about. So not only are we seeing that on the shop floor, but we're also hearing that you know our customers, suppliers are having those same labor shortages, which are causing delays obviously in the supply chain um also procurement professionals because they're asked to do more with those labor shortages they're getting burned out um so they're not you know they need to get you know get some help um and buyers to fill positions when a company is in growth mode which surprisingly and with all the stuff going on in the news all of our customers manufacturing customers are in, in growth mode that's the first thing we're seeing the second thing we're seeing is inflation is causing raw material cost to really skyrocket right and sometimes manufacturers cannot pass that increase on to their end customers if they want to keep those contracts or that business so they're that's impacting their profitability um, as well and the third thing that we're really seeing is lead times are longer for certain raw materials like we talked about um, that that causes manufacturers not able to plan um, production accurately because the dates are a moving target right now and um that's that's the three things that we're really seeing yeah. affecting our customers. And that's plenty. That is plenty. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Shannon, I want to bring you in here. Uh, you might see some of the same. You might have some differences. When you think of the, some of the top challenges out there, Shannon, what comes to your mind? Oh, it's the same stuff that I'm hearing. I'm hearing it more from the transportation perspective, but it's the same kind of the same categories. Uh, you know, I was talking with a customer on Monday. They actually came out to uh, – Scottsdale, they're out here for some spring training game, uh, games. And, you know, of course, it took them golfing. Uh, it was a nice day out. <laughs> it was in Phoenix. Yeah, we went up the desert mountain. And, uh, you know, one of the things that came up while we were out there was he was talking about, you know, lead times and the ocean freight and, you know, procurement and purchasing. And, you know, how do we, how do we really do that right? Because, you know, after coming through the pandemic, everybody just kind of, you know, filled the warehouse with, with as much as they could. Now they're concerned about recession and do we have the right amount? Do I have too much inventory? How do I manage that? And then that led down the path of, you know, we really don't have experienced procurement people. We don't have enough. We don't have, so it's like it all kind of bleeds together into the labor side as well. And then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, in our freight spend, we got to make sure we have the right carriers hauling our freight. And if we are deciding to source from different locations, how do I get the right carriers? So it's like all this stuff intertwines. Um, and that's where you know, I'm hearing pretty much the same thing. It's different examples right. of problems that are being caused by those same exact issues. Yep. Different ripples, different ramifications, yeah, right. different repercussions. Uh, and that's really, it's really good given all the work y'all do. Uh, across the, as you mentioned, the transportation space, and we're going to touch on manufacturing, some other sectors in a minute. Uh, Greg, uh, I want to. I think this is uh, before I get your take here. I think this is Shannon, I believe, and y'all correct me, Amanda and Catherine, wrong. 
9 a.m. and I'm craving Paul's chicken sandwich. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Just almost wrecking the conversation on the front end here. Um, all right. So back to back to the topic at hand. Greg, we're talking about some of the pains and challenges. Paul and Shannon, they've got their finger on the pulse, given the nature of what they do and who they do it with. Your thoughts, Greg? Well, I mean, what we're hearing a lot is just people don't know where the next disruption is coming from. And and they also don't know where the weakest link in their supply chain is. Um, everyone, everyone knows they have fragilities. They don't know where or what it's caused by or what is the next triggering event that could um, have that fail catastrophically or even significantly, mm. you know, when when the uh, stuff hits the fan. So I think the lack of the lack of clarity around what your supply chain looks like, who your participants are, who's good, middling and bad in your supply chain. I think that's a real threat for a lot of, of companies out there today. So true. It's the matinee version, folks. We've got to keep it clean for the kids. When the stuff hits the fan, as Greg right. put it. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's shift gears. We talked, uh, I mentioned manufacturing a moment ago. Um, you know, rate links, Shannon works with tons of manufacturers and retailers. So Shannon, what can you tell us about those labor shortages that Paul mentioned uh, earlier and the impact there? Well, you know, the impact's going to be around, I think it's, it's a lot of it's around just the quality of the employees that they're getting. Cause they're filling the seats as best they can uh, with people. They're just, you know, maybe not able to, get the most experienced folks uh, for the job or do the right type of training with them. And I think that's mm -hmm. where, you know, the systems that we have, whether it's the ERP or the TMS or both of them together, it's the, the whole point of them is to help uh, drive the process. Uh, and I think take some of that decision-making, um, I wouldn't say away, but maybe automate that decision-making for them. So that way you make the decision once you put the rules in place and then, you know, let the system drive it. Uh, for you. So that way you don't have to have quite as many people to do it. System's going to make it more efficient. And because you've got the system doing it, it's going to be more consistent mm. as well. And I think that's also going to speak to a little bit of the labor shortage that people are running into. So you don't have to find that, you know, you know, the, the cornerback that runs the four two forty, right. You know, all the time, uh, you can get you can get away with the deep shell coverage, and everybody's in the right spot at the right time, uh, doing what they have to do. So, but if you do find that cornerback, Shannon, send them to the Atlanta Falcons. They we could use it here in Atlanta. Unfortunately, um, the Bears have a little too much cap room right now, so I'm going to send them there so that I okay. can have a hometown team. <laughs> by Greg White and his, you know, Kansas City Chiefs and all the, you know titles and oh my god it's so great it's like wow time is coming buddy <laughs> title I'm pulling town. Forward, Shannon. i am and I'm, <laughs> I'm, pulling for, I'm pulling for all of us because i think that's a great way to describe it is look it's sort of like the nfl had a mass retirement of their oldest and best and most qualified players who had this secret in their mind of how the game was played the other day we talked about how how we lost track for centuries of how to how to do concrete between the Romans and the modern era, and that's because we didn't capture that knowledge before it all left the, left out the door, or in the case of the Romans, right. died off. Right, and that's part of the challenge that we have, and that's why what Shannon is describing is embedding that knowledge into technology is so important, because you can't teach people a lot of what baby boomers learned over 50, 30, 50 years in the work workforce that was almost never documented. So capturing that, embedding that in technology, which it frankly would have been embedded years ago if it weren't for the fact that we were trying to protect so many jobs. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have to protect those jobs because as we've all just talked about here. People are staying away from these jobs in drones, in mm -hmm. drones, in, 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 the case of drones or instead of or, right, enabling drones. Anyway, in, in droves, because they don't want the dark, the dirty, the dangerous and the dull jobs, right? They don't want jobs where they're just pushing a button and a computer is really good at doing that. And we can position human beings to do the exception management rather than the rule <clears throat> management, because now technology has the ability to manage those rules and those repetitive processes much, much more effectively. Mm -hmm. 
Outstanding. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> the drone just dropped it on us. I love it. Man, uh, that was great. like that was very Freudian, though, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, I failed psychology, so we can't go too too much further mm. on Freud. It means uh, I was Paul. thinking about it. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> uh, we heard a lot from Shannon and Greg there uh, that, that kind of piggybacked on your earlier comments around the labor shortages and the impact. Anything else that you'd like to add there, Paul? Sure. Well, first of all, I'm kind of jealous of the Falcons and the Bears for all the moves <laughs> they're making. I think uh, our Patriots up here, I still think they have the best quarterback of all time, but now he's a baby, baby boomer too, and he retired and left and they're not signing anyone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what we're, we're seeing is similar to what Shannon mentioned is uh, using the systems to provide automation and efficiency. Um, but we're also seeing some of our manufacturers um, and through all the supply chain and, and distributors are, are looking at different ways for recruitment. Um, I think back in, you know, 10 years ago, people thought of manufacturing companies with big smokestacks and things like that. Mm -hmm. It was dirty. It's not. I mean, it's high tech. It's clean. It's, you know, a great place to work, great opportunity. So reaching out and marketing about that to get, you know, people interested in these industries is really important. We're seeing uh, a lot of companies work with veterans to bring in some new talent, mm -hmm. working with colleges and high schools. Synergy is actually just partnered with Farmingdale University out of the SUNY system in New York mm -hmm. to actually create an ERP and supply chain program where we can we've actually hired a few people from that, which has been great. And then I have a friend that's uh, actually in Plast down in Hampshire that runs a small manufacturing company that works with Best Buddies and brings in the Best Buddy program to do some of the, the work around the shop. So being able to bring those folks in um, and attract new talent helps with that burnout we talked about in the beginning. But again, it all comes back to efficiency, leaning out your processes and using the right tools that can automate those processes. Yeah, Paul, I agree. And, and what you were implying throughout some of your answer is getting so much more creative in finding that talent uh, these right. days. And that sounds real cliche, but man, the struggle is real. As Jonathan says, really hard in the customized metal manufacturing uh, uh, industry. And going back, Jenny Froome, great to see here, preparedness, talking about some of the earlier comments here, was one of the many messages at the Africa Supply Chain in Action virtual event over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. So many unknowns to be prepared for. So many knowns and unknowns. Known one of the big knowns is this labor. Uh, Greg, anything else to add? I'll give the the Greg White drone delivery an opportunity to drop a little more knowledge on us here. I mean, labor labor is on the tips of everyone's tongues, right? Yeah, it is, and I mean that's you know that's why this topic, right? Getting technology to work together more effectively. There's two reasons for it. One. You have to have it doing the job because there aren't enough people to do the job. I don't know if everyone remembers, but we already had a labor shortage in supply chain mm -hmm. in 2019, right? We had over a 10% unemployment rate in supply chain. And, and now with supply chain having added so many jobs, it's even greater. It's not, it's not a smaller problem than it's been. And because baby boomers made up such an incredible portion of of the supply chain um, labor pool, it's it's gotten even worse. And those people will never be back, right? The great resignation, the great myth of the great resignation is that it was Gen X, Y, and Z, but it was really mm. baby boomers and they will never come back. So we have to acknowledge that. And the other thing is that because we are gonna have a ton of newbies in the industry, technology is a great enabler for those people. And we've already touched on the fact that they will come in inexperienced, undertrained and um and also i think we need to ex express with the expectation that technology does technology things and humans do to human things right mm. we're talking about digital natives here people who were born with an ipad in their hands or at least were at every dinner with their parents <laughs> with their headphones on and an ipad in their hands so that um so they're used to technology and they expect technology to do the things that it, it should do i mean Right. So <clears throat> the time is right for this kind of enablement. Yeah. We agreed. Completely agreed. Um, okay. So I want to shift gears a bit and, and talk freight. Freight spend accounts for some 10 to 20% of a company's revenue. Uh, Shannon, how often are companies keeping their freight spend and their financial systems in sync, especially without that pesky manual data entry involved? Your thoughts, <laughs> Shannon? 
So how often do they think they're doing it or how often? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's answer both, both maybe. Shannon, no kidding. I mean, you're on the front line there. Yeah, they all, well, they all think they're doing it, um, I guess is the short answer. Um, but, you know, it, it's a challenge. I mean, it's mm. definitely a challenge. And I think that's where the, the integration uh, between a TMS and ERP really comes into play. I think mm. getting that right is going to help them. Uh, you know, it's funny. We were, I was talking with, talking with a company the other day. And if they're listening, they'll know it was them when I say this because it's a direct quote, but it was kind of a good quote. Um, okay. You know, they were talking about their freight spend. You know, we have a we have an X million dollar a year freight spend. And, you know, we're just trying to figure out what kind of stupid is in there. And I thought. <laughs> <laughs> they sure well, will know who they're talking to. They sure know if they heard yeah, that. Like, that's too direct of a quote, but I but it's a great one. And it's yes. like, so. So the question is, I mean, you know, are they keeping it really that connected if they're wondering what kind of stupid is in there? And I think that's where that's the level of connection that I think about. So, again, you know, do most companies think they're doing it? Absolutely, they're doing it. They could pull a P&L and see what their freight cost is for that given year, but they don't have the level of granularity that they need to truly understand it. Uh, and then once you truly understand it, then you can start affecting it and managing it and making change. And I think that's the next level that we're seeing a lot of companies wake up to and realize that, hey, we 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 are connecting it, but we're maybe not connecting it the way we have to in order to impact change and make sure that as we're making these changes, we get the results that we're expecting, or at least we understand why we're getting the results that we're seeing. And I think that's where you know, this type of integration that we're talking about is so crucial. It's more than just pulling in a sales order, generating a shipping label, sending back a carrier and charges so they can generate an invoice to their customer. There's a lot more to it than that. If you truly want to manage this, this large spend that you have within the company, and I think that's, that's the thing that people are now realizing, especially now you get through uh, the pandemic that we were through, where everybody was just too busy getting freight out the door, getting getting raw materials in, and now they're at the point where they're like, "Oh my gosh, we got to start, you know, managing this spend." And you know, are we going into a recession? Are we not right. going into? If I'm in growth mode, how do I grow the right way and make sure that this freight spend doesn't, you know, balloon out of control, stuff like that? Right. And, that and so, so the short answer to your question is: Are they no? Um, uh, and the, well, are they? Yes. But are they doing it at the level that they need to moving forward? I would say no. OK, and I think that's where the, the changes are coming. Right. Well, and as you described, the challenge is real, but the opportunity is even more realer. Is that a word, Greg? I will go with it. I like that. It's real. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's the realest thing out there. Yeah. We'll there you go. That. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. All right. So, Paul, what are you seeing in this regard? Yeah, I think um, what we see from an ERP perspective when implementing ERP is a lot of these ERPs say they support things like landed cost, mm -hmm. um, rate shopping, international shipping, and automating all that whole process, plus all the other things that rate links can provide. But typically, it's it's not really there. So you end up rekeying or needing a custom integration. So that's that takes a lot of time, requires more labor. And we talked about labor being short. So what you can do with the integration to rate links and and all the, the 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 tools that the tool that Raylinks has in it better supports you know our customers with a standard integration that you know is seamless and creates that efficiency that you need to be able to take those folks that you might have to hire to do the rekeying in and they can help with supply chain or finding new suppliers or you know that kind of thing. All right. So Paul, uh, thank you for that. And Greg, coming to you next. What I heard from Paul is not only does it work, but it doesn't take more of your precious team members time and that's like uh that's a holy duo greg your thoughts on what shannon and paul were talking about here yeah a couple things one is let's repeat the framing statement of this question <laughs> freight spend accounts for 20, 10 to 20 percent of a company's revenue so if you have a hundred million dollars in revenue it's somewhere between 10 and 20 million dollars where is the right number is what you have to figure out and that is an enormous swing in terms of cash flow and profitability within a company. 
And the other is this realization, and I can say it, Paul has to uh, implement ERP, so he can't be as bold about it. So I'm going to take the bullet for you, Paul. <laughs> and, and, and that is ERP traditionally in these areas of specialty is a mile wide and an inch deep. And a TMS, like what Rate Links does, is a mile deep in that very specific area. And that's the difference between manual entry or the inability to do some tasks at all. So that's why this whole discussion of integrating a very specialized technology like TMS with your ERP, sharing the appropriate data, and then using the right tool for the job, right? It's like using the back of a screwdriver instead of using a hammer to drive nails, um, right? It, let's use the, the hammer and, and TMS is the hammer. So mm. I think that's important for us to recognize, but I'm on the, I, I want to ask this question rhetorically and if okay. anyone led to answer it, go for it. But I don't want to put anyone on the spot, Shannon. Um, <laughs> is 10 or is 20% the right answer or is it somewhere in between? Because if it's 10, I feel like virtually every com company ought to be able to get there. And why aren't they all flooding your, your doorways to go, please help us get there? You know, what's interesting is I'm seeing that uh, from some of these companies, it's it's even gone above 20%. Wow. Um, I mean, I used to always use the rule of thumb. It was like 10%-ish um, is what it used to be. And now it's kind of inched up and now it's 10 to 20. So, uh, I mean, I, you know, of course, my How answer much is, is in 20 versus the amount of stupid in 10. Right? <laughs> there's a, there's is that a, really what your customer was kind of talking about? I mean, it's a, a 2x stupid, I guess. Yeah, uh, okay, that's good. There. And it, it is an interesting way to look at it. And it's not that anybody did anything stupid, it's right. that there's a lot of things happening in that freight spend that uh, I think are caused by just a lack of knowledge. Yeah, right. it's more ignorant than stupid, isn't it? They don't even know more ignorance. what they're missing. I would yeah. I would frame it under ignorance, not stupidity. It's like yeah. you just you just have a lack of knowledge around right. it. I think that's the visibility side yeah. to it. And Shannon, I think we we were all with you. Uh, you the person you were taught speaking to wasn't calling anyone stupid. It's the process, it's the ignorance, <laughs> it's the nature of kind of how this how organizations can approach yeah. this. They were talking about their own business, so they may have been calling stupid. <laughs> yeah, okay. that I can't speak to. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But right. Greg can undoubtedly. <laughs> hey, but I, but I think that I think that is a good point. Is uh, you know, just I don't think people know what they're missing, mm. right? And Paul, to your point, it's because of if they're using ERP to do this very complex task, it's it's not robust enough, right? It's not uh, integrated enough. It's too manual. Let's just put it that way, and, exactly. and it leaves a lot of room for error. We don't even have to call it stupid. It's just. Uh, un, you know, unenabled or whatever. it's opportunity, yeah. right? It's opportunity. Um, Paul, uh, you're you're not when when Greg was making a point a minute ago about the the mile wide and really shallow and then the, the mile deep. You are nodding your head uh, in agreement. You would you like to add a comment there, and then we're going to move on to talk about a few other uh, challenges. Paul, any yeah. any additional comments there about the you know uh, the specific the right tool at the right time, perhaps. Yeah, so an ERP can do a lot. And, you know, those programmers that are developing the ERP and the product director team, they have to focus on what they're really good at. So that ends up being things like capturing all that data, that master data, the material planning, the scheduling, um, mm -hmm. in some cases, uh, making sure the, the parts and the inventory are, are good and that you have, you have that whole AR and AP flow. But, right. you know, if you look at something like salesforce.com, right, it's the best of breed CRM. An ERP company is not going to compete with a salesforce.com, just right. like an ERP company is not going to compete with a TMS. A right. TMS. So absolutely agree with Greg. Some are better than others, but absolutely agree. Yeah. And, and, and vice versa. I mean, TMS right. doesn't do finance and accounting very, at all <laughs> in most exactly. cases, right? Yeah. It's a synergistic. Oh, my God. I, did, I went there. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's a synergistic relate. Let's call it symbiotic, so we don't yeah. do BS bingo here. But um, it, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? It's sort of like hand in glove, mm. right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, as I as I shift gears here, because I want to bring in a couple comments, you got to call in the pros. Uh, Lamar Jackson, get an agent, get an agent. You'd have a big old deal by now. You got to call in the pros, right? 
Um, so, so continuing with that little analogy, I think I can share uh, this uh, quote here. In fact, I'm going to drop it because it covers up the screen. A uh, guy says, companies going back to labor, companies need to be more open-minded and less rigid when they're looking at their labor issues. Some companies want their candidates to check 10 of the 10 boxes when they're interviewing candidates. Going back to the football analogy, thank you, guy. The Saints hired an undersized QB in Drew Brees. He wasn't 6'4 with a big arm, and it seems that worked out well for the Saints. So labor is a big theme here, yeah. and guys, that's a great comment there. Um, okay, and thank you, Santiago. I appreciate your feedback on a great program. I agree. These, these, this, this is uh, good stuff from Greg, Paul, and Shannon. And Josh, yes, ignorance is a great way to get blindsided. Excellent point there, Josh. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so as we kind of come around the maybe the home stretch, maybe not quite, but what are we doing about it? We, we've kind of laid out a lot of different um, a lot of different challenges, uh, unique and common that organizations are face are being faced with. You know, some of these have, have been around forever; others are newer. But let's talk about what are we doing about it. So, Shannon, what are some of the ways that you're seeing business leaders out there uh, offset and address these challenges, break through? Uh, and find some success? Well, I think it, it starts with uh, first getting a good um, foundation around where you're at today. And I think that's where it comes down to that visibility and, you know, connecting the data correctly. So you actually truly know what you're spending, where you're spending it, why you're spending it. Uh, and then from there, what we see is the strategies are then created. Uh, and with the tools that are out there, you can model a lot of those strategies to make sure that you're getting the results you want. So that way, when you finally deploy it, you know, and that's why we use the, the three D's, you know, diagnose, develop, deploy, diagnose the real problem. So again, measure everything right. Right. So that way you can develop the right solution that when deployed can actually be executed the way you need to. I think that's where by having the systems, the ERP and the TMS is connected together, uh, you can diagnose, develop, and deploy correctly um, and quickly uh, and get the results that you're expecting. And, and that's, that's really what I'm seeing out there with a lot of companies. And it's just taking that step back rather than just deploying, right. which is, I think, the old way. Hey, let's just quick go do this. You know, we had a customer in the old, you know, long time ago. He, he's since retired, but he used, to, <laughs> he used to use the analogy, you know, you know shoot, ready, aim. Mm. and uh let's not do that anymore <laughs> don't do that don't do that please well and, and shannon uh we can fool ourselves often as business leaders right we can make these these deadly assumptions and to your point we've got to jump in there roll up sleeves and really embrace reality for where we are as an organization and where the process is right mm -hmm. yeah well, yeah yeah okay. you can <laughs> yeah it's the goldfish uh thing you know whatever even though it's not true goldfish does have a memory for longer than that but we'll ted lasso that, lied to us shannon <laughs> we'll let that myth continue because it's a nice one you know the poor little goldfish that whatever happened to him in the last minute has been happening to that poor little goldfish for its entire life as far as it's concerned because that's its memory and mm. and i see a lot of that on the freight side except i would i would say it's more like the the elephant because you know, on the transportation side, they'll remember something that happened to them 20 years ago. <laughs> no, no way, man. 20 years ago. That's never happening to me again. That carrier <laughs> came in, wrecked everything, never using them again, <laughs> ever. So they leading, <laughs> leading by the, uh, with the rule of the exception, perhaps, is kind of what you're alluding to. Paul, I know you're chomping a bit to get in here. What are you seeing some business leaders do to work through some of these uh, big and small challenges? Yeah, we're seeing and helping manufacturing leaders and distribution leaders, you know, lean out their processes, right? So becoming more efficient and also using technology or digital disruption, the big keyword the last buzzword for the last 15 years, right? But we're actually seeing them, you know, implement cobots, robots, tying their ERP into their machines in the shop floor through IoT, Internet of Things, and, and all of the efficiencies we're seeing from that. And then we're also getting back to basics. Um, we've lost a lot of knowledge, tribal knowledge, like we've been talking about on this program. So getting into like uh, lean programs, supplier performance workshops, things of that nature, and, and really, you know, improving the processes in those companies with the software as a piece of that. But it's not the only thing. It's the processes are the most important. 
And then automation, um, automation around, you know, things like we're talking about with TMS and rate links, how that automates that whole process of uh, freight and shipping with the, the ERP, uh, PO collaboration. You know, if you can collaborate with your POs, the buyers and suppliers, you know, they can share a view of future forecast, planned orders, every PO, the line chain, shipments, receipts, payments and approval so everyone can make smart decisions. So that collaboration can be important with the new online collaboration these new tools have. Um, and then, you know, just improving capacity and um, reducing backlog on the shop floor with better scheduling and delivery uh, performance tools like um, dynamic production methods. So that's what we're really uh, seeing out there. Outstanding, Paul. I appreciate that. That's quite a, quite a uh, uh, holistic list. Greg, uh, I'm glad you and I don't have memories like a goldfish. We'd never get anything done around here and be able to hold conversations like this, right? Paul, bring it, uh, I'm sorry, Greg, bring it home with your hearing from Shannon and Paul with what leaders are doing about it. Because that's, that's what they're charged to do, right? Is to do something about all these daggone problems. Your thoughts, Greg? Yeah, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, nice. <laughs> I mean, I think... <clears throat> I think there is a little bit of shell shock, right? That whole uh, people are still compensating for what happened during COVID, for instance, right? Or um, literally, I uh, had a colleague that in his first purchasing job inadvertently bought a truckload instead of a pallet of brooms for his company. And, um, and they literally augmented the system with a don't buy more than X brooms button not just wow. any item, don't buy any more than X rooms button <clears throat> um, because that's what he asked for. Mm. But I think, and, and I think what, what we're starting to see is this shift towards looking for what the outcome that is desired, not the methodology or the process that, that we want duplicated in technology, but what is the outcome that we mm. want from implementing technology and working back from there. And the more that we see that, the more effective technology implementations will be. One of the problems with, you know, everybody's heard of all these tough ERP implementations, but mostly that is because companies insisted that their implementers do make the technology do this. This horrible process that we had before, we'd like it automated so it burns the company to the ground faster. <laughs> Things like that. But instead now, I think we have much, much more bold, educated and specialist technologists <laughs> like Paul and Shannon, who can say, no, no, no. I, I just want you to tell me what you want. What is the outcome that you want? We'll show you how to get there. We'll let you know if that's going to impact your processes or your people and their skills. And if they need upskilling or they need a different process or training in that process. So I, I think that shift is one of the things that we're seeing and, and, because there are so many inexperienced users and managers out there, they're much, much more likely to lean on the knowledge of the experts who have been in the trade for longer yeah. and, and simply say, I just want this to happen. Right. And, and in a way, I think that's good. It's sort of that blessing of naivete. I don't give a dog gone how you get there. <laughs> um, but matinee, there's matinee. where I want to get, <laughs> right? Well, it, and such a great point, Greg. Um, you know, business leaders don't need to, to, to map all, all the X and O's. Tell us what, tell, tell folks, tell the pros like Shannon and Paul the outcomes you're, you're after, right? Yeah. Um, Shannon, you're nodding your head. Uh, yeah. Do you wish more folks would just tell you the outcomes are after and let you and the rate links team get to it? Well, I mean, I think that's part of the fun is the questioning, right? Um, and I think that's what makes us different than most is we are uh, those that type of company where we're going to ask the question. So this is a perfect segue, man. You're reading my mind, Shannon. You're reading my mind <laughs> like you always do. So let's talk more. You know, we heard from Paul on the front end about what Synergy does and all the cool things he and the team are doing. Uh, on the flip side, rate links, you know, Folks have been tuned into supply chain now uh, for a couple of years now. They've seen your face with us uh, numerous times. We're going back to the first time you and I met out in uh, um, Arizona at a conference at Demska. So yeah. tell us for the three people out there that may not know, what does Rate Links do in a nutshell, uh, Shannon? Then we're going to talk about some of the resources you all brought to the table today. I mean, you know, what we do is 
we help a lot of companies uh, with their transportation spend. So not only are we going to ask them the right questions to make sure that you know we're diagnosing the problems that they have, but we also have you know world class TMS that we can deploy uh, very quickly, uh, very easily, and integrate it the exact right way. So that way they're getting the results that they're looking for. And mm. so I think that's that's how we help all of our customers. And you know to bring it back to a customer who had the great direct quote, we help root out the, the stupid that might be sitting out there and give them a way to flush it out of the system. Uh, uh, I think that should be your tagline, truly, Shane. I, we root out the stupid. I'm going to use that uh, for as long as I can because that was a great quote. Well, we'll have to we'll have to ask Shannon C. Who I think is in the in the comments. Uh, the skybox is what she thinks of that. Um, <laughs> Shannon. I, I, Shannon V, I, uh, Shannon, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, and let's talk about a couple of resources. Um, so, Shannon, you mentioned we really the panel here has mentioned a couple of times integrations, integrations, integrations. Well, hey, the Rate Links team, uh, you're on the move. Got a, a variety of uh, new integrations, and y'all can check that out. We're going to drop a link into the chat to see some of the um, a, a video overview of, of those new integrations at Rate Links. So, y'all check that out. And I love the tagline y'all put. Talk about great tag, taglines: smarter, faster simpler i yep. love that greg it's kind of like uh the six million dollar man when, when i hear that phrase huh? yeah but i can't remember what that one is it's yeah you know, stronger, stronger faster, faster better i think something like better, that stronger, faster, something like <laughs> but that. i like i like yours better shannon because of the last one smarter faster simpler yeah and that's a just the, the the word puts us at ease and so we've got a link to y'all check that out uh, there, the video overview of those integrations. And then secondly, and Shannon, I want to get you to speak to this a bit. Um, we have a link to this incredible project led by the Rate Leaks team where you worked with a Fortune 100 company to save millions of dollars annually. If that doesn't get your attention, going back to uh, Greg's uh, uh, prefacing statement on that question uh, 10, 15 minutes ago. So tell us, why should folks check out this link? I mean, gosh, if millions of dollars don't appeal to you, maybe that's the only reason you wouldn't click. Your thoughts, Shannon? Yeah, I mean, you know, this gives you an idea of what's really happening out there. I mean, this was one example, uh, probably, you know, the scale of which I'll probably never see again in my career. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, you think about every company out there, this is happening. Uh, and it's just a matter of to what degree is it happening at your company? You know, mm. there's a lot of a lot of folks that we talk to where I ask them about the the audit and they're like, oh no, we just we just make sure it's our invoice and then we pay it. So it's like it's <laughs> you're gonna see different levels of of what's out there. So I think you check that out, it's gonna at least lend a little bit of reality to how we could impact the bottom line very quickly and very easily. And again, you know, just like our tag says, you know, it's a it's a very simple solution. We're we're not very complex. I mean, that's why I couldn't come up with some magic chicken thing. <laughs> it's just not it's not what I do, man. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's okay. Do what you do best and yes, do what you right. enjoy. And clearly, that intersects with uh, driving big, good change in industry. And Greg and Paul, uh, I want to share this this graphic again because I think as as big as some of these numbers, look at this: less than thirty days to complete Paul. So, you know what's Greg, interesting go ahead. about that is what's interesting about that is it doesn't matter what size your company is. Those numbers apply 34 X ROI. It may not be millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions in your company. But remember, if you are between that 10 and 20%, I think we can establish that it ought to be closer to 10%, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to be that big of a company for that to be millions. And all of those millions matter. The relative scale of that, right? If you're a hundred thousand dollar business, that's twenty thousand dollars of your revenue going yeah. to freight. So, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, the the scale is there, and that's what makes it worth it. Is the scale of it, you know, the percentage of your of your revenue. Mm. Well said, Greg. Well said. And hopefully uh, from your lips to our audience's ears, especially those that are in position to do something about it, Paul. Um, really have enjoyed. Clearly, you you have uh, set a new standard when we talk food here at Supply Chain. Now, you didn't think that uh, your contribution was going to make waves as much as it did, huh? Yeah, I got some people uh, hungry. Hopefully, there's no supply chains to chicken. Yeah. Oh, right, right. 
Well, hey, uh, <coughs> kidding, kidding aside, we're going to ask you to make sure folks that connect with you and Synergy team. But when you see numbers like we just shared and, and heard Greg's perspective, you know, no matter what size of company you are um, and that wonderful word simplicity, your final word around um, maybe why folks should take some action, whether they work with rate links or, or find a different solution, your, your call to action, perhaps, Paul. Yeah, I think we've been talking about those labor shortages and people getting burnt out. So whatever you can do to automate um, and then automate with those cost savings um, just goes right to the bottom line. Right. So that's that's the final word I got. I love it, Paul. And hey, because yeah. if you're not going to do it for your bottom line, which is plenty of good enough reason, do it for your people. Right. Do right. it for your people. Right. Um, OK, so, Greg, I'm going to get your final key takeaway on, on the other side after we bid Paul and Shannon adieu. And um, OK, guy. Easy, easy. Six million dollar man. You guys are showing your age. I'm bad about that. I read Reader's Digest still. So uh <laughs> y'all <laughs> be kind, be kind. Reader's uh, and, Digest still exists. Yeah, that uh it does. It's, it's skinny down, as you might imagine. Paul I think mentioned <laughs> leaned down earlier, and it's been leaned down, but hey, it's still a good good read. Um, Gartner ranked rate links on their TMS magic quadrant as the leader for usability and simplicity. Man, Shannon, you and the team have been on uh, been on the move there. Um, so let's hey. do this. What's that, Greg? No, go oh. ahead. I'll do it on the other side. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Shannon while he's here. I want to talk about him behind his back. There you go. The other <laughs> side, Greg White. New series coming to Supply Chain now. I love that. All right, so, Paul, uh, really appreciate As busy as you and the team are, appreciate you carving some time out to not only uh, share what you're seeing out there and some things you're doing and some helpful uh, uh, perspective for our audience, but to shed a little bit of light on, on what you and the rate links team, you know, some of y'all's, y'all's collaboration there, how can folks connect all with you and the synergy resources team? Sure. You can find us on LinkedIn. We have a synergy resources site, myself, Paul Tedford, or our website, synergy resources.net. And that's probably the best way to contact us. It's just that easy. So yeah. uh, Paul, 13 inches of snow last night. I hope that's not sitting in your driveway waiting on waiting for you this afternoon, is it? Yeah, I hope no, it's but... not between you and that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing is my son's home from spring break, so he's out there right now. So. Uh, uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll get him to go to school in the South. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We've got a link to uh, check out Paul and connect with him uh, on uh, via LinkedIn in the chat. Uh, Shannon. Great guest. Thank you for bringing Paul yep. along uh, for your uh, regular visit with us and, and chat with us. How can folks connect, Shannon, with you and the Rate Links team that's on the move? Yeah, again, get us on LinkedIn uh, or you can hit our website, ratelinks.com. Shoot me an email, give me a call, talk to Greg, he'll hook you up. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm headed to Phoenix here pretty shortly, Shannon. So, uh, warm up to Maserati. Perfect. So, Shannon. Go. Uh, Shannon, we didn't ask you, uh, my, you know, I, I've got that goldfish attention span. You mentioned that a customer came out and you, you're like, of course we played golf. Who won Shannon? When you what? and that customer came out, won. Shannon, of course, Shannon V. Oh, I'm a good host. Oh yeah. yeah. Good, good, good customer golf for a reason, Scott. Oh man. <laughs> so you can tell I don't play golf, huh? Um, well, hey, uh, I've had, uh, what a heck of a conversation we've had here today with Paul Tedford, with Synergy and our dear friend, back by popular man, Shannon Valancourt with Rate and Links. Paul, Shannon, thank you very much. Yeah, Have we'll a great you. rest of your day. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, Greg. All right. The other side with Greg White. Come, come join in. Tune in for the best frank key takeaways from any conversation we have here at supply I'll chain now, I so, really think. Um, I, <laughs> so greg uh, your well, favorite thing all, yeah what's that your favorite thing you heard here today sorry favorite thing <clears throat> um well the uh, favorite thing is that shannon is prudent enough to let his clients win at golf <laughs> because we all know that well, i mean anybody who's met him or has met his sons know that he could whip just about anybody uh, except his sons. <clears throat> um, but no, I'd, ha I'd have to say that the, the symbiotic nature of this, because I'm afraid to say synergy too much. It sounds like an ad, doesn't it? But the symbiotic nature of this, of, of ERP and TMS and recognizing those, the limitations and the strengths of each of those, and then combining them for 
the better good of your better good, greater good of your company is a, is a really, really important recognition because so many people, it's, I just call it the technology paradox. They expect to just drop it in and they, and both um, Paul and Shannon alluded to this. You just drop the technology in and magic happens. Your business is transformed, right? But the truth is it takes some effort on your part and it has to be the right technology. It has to have the right capabilities. It has to be easy to use and easy to implement and fast to results. And so that example, that final example that Shannon gave us is a great, um, that's a great uh, affirmation of that, right? Yeah. You can do it fast and with enormous re results, 34x ROI in the first year, 34 mm. ROI. That's one of those numbers when you put it out there, people don't believe it. Um, so I know that Shannon has whoever that is on speed dial. So you can go, just go here, just talk to them. Don't, don't believe me. <laughs> um, he probably says it a little bit more deadpan than that. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm working on my Shannon impression, but I'm, I'm not oh. the right person to do it. Okay. I, can't, I can't be that steady. Um, but you know, the other thing that I think is important to recognize, uh, is, is that um, neither of these guys are new to this game. And because the game has gotten so complex, the knowledge that they represent because of that experience is very, very important. And, and that both of them are so aware that to make a solution effective, that times have changed. It's not our colleagues that came into supply chain and it's not the old men and mostly old men who were in supply chain when we came into it, Scott. Right. They've mostly left. Now it's people who expect different things out of the workplace and expect different things out of technology. And I think people like Shannon and Paul and myself and you are all relieved by that, that now we can embrace automation and robotics and, and technology to do the things that it should have always been doing. But we had to protect those jobs for those people who needed those jobs right and and couldn't adapt to technology now we've got three generations in the workforce that all were raised on technology x y and z right so um i think that's it, that that they are both that experienced and that forward thinking is really really encouraging um and beneficial to companies these days yeah. because that's a really really rare mix to be yeah. have so much experience and not just lean on best practice which as you know i say is peer pressure from old people and um what 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 is it we say tradition is peer pressure from dead people yes that's right best practice is basically peer pressure to do things we've always done it that's probably okay. a better way to say it yes <laughs> so, i like that faster better to, to challenge the status quo like that and to adapt it to a new uh, work environment is is a bold and important thing to do so yeah uh good on both for that Absolutely. Well said. And just adding to that, to belabor a couple of points, um, you know, it uh, came out, you know, we had a show last night uh, and Alan, who was with us here, talked about the courage, kudos to those business leaders with the courage to drive change and help their people because the people, as Paul mentioned, you know, burnout is real. That's not, a, that might sound cliche and, and it's always been with us, but man, it's the last few years as a pressure on the personal side and the professional side. I mean, it, it really, so do whatever you do, whether you give Paul or Shannon a call, whatever you do, man, drive that good change to help your people out. Cause they want yeah, to, as we said, as I said earlier, Scott, people are staying away in drones. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hey, Greg, always a pleasure. I really enjoyed, I knew this was going to be a good, good conversation, especially yeah. between the synergy that you, Paul and Shannon had, Hey, I got to call it for what it is. Right. Uh, but Greg had a great time here today. Yeah, likewise. It was a lot of fun. It's always good to talk to somebody who's been doing it so effectively for so long and so true. And, and have that philosophy shared with the entire pro base. That's right. And before I wrap, I'm just going to give Josh Goody uh, a thank you for help trying to help me update some of my references. Better, Faster, Stronger. There's also a Daft Punk song that throws harder in there. So, Josh, thank you. I'm going to update my reference to that. and Hope you're doing well. Always a pleasure to have you as part of the conversation. Uh, big thanks to Amanda and Catherine and Tracy and Shannon behind the scenes helping to make uh, the show today happen. But, folks, whatever you do, 
hey, take it from Greg, take it from Paul, take it from Shannon. Act, act, deeds, not words. Mm -hmm. And with that said, Scott Luton challenging you to do good, to give forward, to be the change that's needed. And we'll see you next time right back here at Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.